Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra episode number 3 and 4. Okay, in the previous episode, um, we started a completely new journey which is happening uh, a few decades later. Um, Aang is no more. Uh, Katara is still alive and I think Sokka is also not alive anymore and uh, we still don't know whether Toph is alive or not but this is like the current situation mm. oh we still don't know if Zuko is alive that's another thing that we don't know um then uh like as we were seeing uh like we saw Aang's children uh, Tenzin and I think like they, they mentioned something I think Katara mentioned something about uh Tenzin's brothers which mean like uh Aang has a more like you know more than one child so I, I'm guessing we're going to get introduced to them uh, eventually and you know a lot of things happen we see our new protagonist Korra um, she's an avatar and she is like the complete opposite of Aang like you know like her, <coughs> the, her the way the personality and even like you know the whole way like she is uh, completely uh, what can I say like she, she's like a genius unlike Aang where Aang had to like Aang has himself was a genius in a way but still he had to actually learn the different like you know elements one after the other but um since like you know Korra has been able to do it from the beginning and she just mastered everything except airbending like her main thing that she needs to learn is airbending and that's the only thing so uh like obviously the, the the there's like the whole thing of like it's peace and that's why i'm guessing she also was able to so easily master so many techniques unlike ang's time where she literally had to go from one place to another just to find a teacher uh like you know uh saving himself hiding from the fire lord like that's not the situation now now everything is at peace so obviously Korra had a lot more like you know simplicity and a lot of uh you know uh what can i say safety yeah like she she was a lot more safer to actually pursue her um her, her dreams no her uh like you know the techniques the uh, elemental uh, bending techniques she was able to do that in a lot more safe environment and a lot more easily so yeah and um Anyway, so yeah, that was hap uh, what was happened in the first uh, episode. Uh, the fine, uh, the second. Oh, and Cora went on his own on her own journey. He went to Tens, like the Republic City. Stuff happened. She got arrested. <laughs> Tenzin came and told her to go away. Uh, but in the end, she was like, "Okay, fine, you can stay, and I'll teach you." And in episode two, she actually joins the fair. There's this whole like you know clash between Tenzin and Cora of uh, which is better the modern like you no know, it's like the clash between the modern and the older generation that kind of thing was going on in the end like they came to a conclusion that yeah everything is good you know uh, moderately There's, you cannot disregard one or the other you know you can't say that ah modern things are bad or you can't say that oh the traditional way is bad no everything is good uh, moderately and uh, they came to a conclusion tenzin also came to like you know an understanding he was like all right fine i'll teach you the way you can like you know understand properly and uh yeah so officially i guess Korra is a part of the fire fairs now and maybe she'll uh probably she will participate in more of the tournaments that they have um anyways um let's get started uh this is episode number three of uh the legend of Korra. so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's start Okay, here's a countdown. Three, two, one, go. All right. Okay, Marco and Bolin. I have, I can't remember. I was unable to remember their name. Oh yeah, this thing also happened. The whole thing with the what was the name? The people who don't like bending, who who say that the revelation, who say that bending is oppression or something like that. Okay. 
people. Oh, okay. Deal with it. Whoa. <laughs> What the who's this? But who's what's that the red thing? Butaka. Oh. Oh my god. Here we go. <laughs> wow. Um Oh great, now we have to <laughs> Oh boy <laughs> True <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's okay Yeah Mm. Okay, that's Babu. <laughs> Cute. <clears throat> mm. Wait, is that? Oh my god, Babu's doing his own thing. <laughs> okay, there you go. Nice. Yes! There you go. Nice. <laughs> oh boy, wow. Who the... Who is this? A snobby friend or something? Shady Shin. Whoa. What? Damn, this guy. Sick. What's with the names in this show? Lightning Bolt, Zol, Shady Shin, Triple Threats. Yeah. Oh my god, he's going to. My god, how much is that? Oh boy, I feel like he's going to get in trouble. Damn. Oh. Well, your brother is... Nice. Damn, they have a nice place. Uh... What? No. <laughs> okay, there you go. Look at her. Yes, perfect. <laughs> what? No, that's not the question. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, Naga. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. She can. You can track. Why? Um. <laughs> Wait, whose statue is that? Is that Zuko's statue?
Hmm. My God. Ah, a little, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Monkey Bell Circle. <laughs> oh my god, come on. <laughs> yep. Agnica is a triad? Wow. My god, this place. It's like this, stir force and stuff, what is it called? <laughs> Never thought I would see something like this in Avatar. Like, it's not Avatar, obviously, but, you know. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, there's the ferret. What was his name? I forgot. Um. <laughs> Pabu Pabu. Calm down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh my god, I think Cora's going to- yeah, oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Oh! They're running! Whoa! The... Shoot off the tires, or I don't know. Wow. Like, it's really weird to see motorbikes and everything and, you know... <laughs> like, I need to get used to this. Oh my god. Oh, there you go. Good old earth, but oh, never mind. Wow. Oh, oh no. What the? Come on. Let's bend. Oh, these people. They need no martial arts. Yeah, proper martial arts. Oh, wait, are they related to? Oh my God, it's related to Tylee, I think. Probably. Her teachings. Yeah, oh God. Yep, this is a problem. What now? Oh, nice. <laughs> well. Yep, there you go. Yeah. Chi blockers, okay, there you go. I'm on. Oh. Equalist, okay. Wow, there's still so many groups. Equalist, a triple threat. Hmm. Oh my god, <laughs> now I need some water. Okay, there you go, water for Naga. <laughs> and for... 
Hmm. Yeah. Money, they need to know money. Oh, and oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, probably not a life. Oh. Oh my god. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> okay, time to go to... Well, you're coming with us. Let's go. <laughs> he just laughs it away. Well, oh, my God. Of course, you should probably not have done that, you know? 9 p.m. God, this. <laughs> ah. Oh my god. Oops. Uh, run. Shut up. What the? My god. <laughs> the way Cora's doing stuff, she, he's going, she's going to be a... Hmm. Oh, those are maps. Those are maps. Yep. Mm, you need more of them. I wait. That was convenient. He just grabbed a few of them, and it was conveniently the ones that they needed. What? Okay. <laughs> All right, here we are. <laughs> this guy's. <laughs> yeah. Well, we. Th those things? Yeah, I think so. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot of them. Hero. Oh, uh, I'm on. Oh. Um, I think they're going to make a public spectacle out of... Oh god, yeah, I think it's going to happen. Something like that is going to happen. Hmm. Okay. Uh, kind of like similar to um oh look his face like 
injured it or literally my god Wow. He's talking about war, but he himself is kind of making a huge deal out of this whole thing. What? What spirits are you talking about? Oh my god, this guy is spewing crap. Wait, really? What? Oh my god. Oh my god, that guy got... God, he also got captured. It's... Oh my god, Bolin's there. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> My God. Yep, they're chi blockers, they can easily take you on. There you go. Whoa! Oh, I, I wonder if this is Ang's technique that he learned, you know? The whole thing that he did with um, Ozai. Like, controlling the inner... No, no, wait. Forever. Like, chi blocking does it for a temporary amount, but the thing that Ang did took away firebending forever. So, are they doing that? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, I thought she was going to bend water within it or something. All right, this works as well. Oops. Um. I'm just a mechanic, you know, I'm the mechanic. No, that was a bad excuse. You could have said that you're a mechanic. <laughs> and... Come on, there you go. Oh, he himself is breaking everything. Good. Yes, nice. <laughs> yeah. All right, come on. Uh, the steam. Yeah. All right, here we go. There you go. Oh no! Okay, there you go, nice. Run! Run! <laughs> oh, 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 oh no! 
Oh my god! Okay. Oh. <coughs> My God, the animation is clean. There you go. You should have just, you know, paid attention. Okay, let's go. Oh my god, everyone's here. Run! <laughs> wow, Naga's strong. Great. This guy was talking big about like you know wars and stuff and now he's saying ah I'll show everyone my pop power. Hmm. Yeah, but she saw a lot of things, you know. Yeah, that's Ang's technique. Yeah. Wow. Huh. We defeat Ozai and this is what awaits us, you know? <laughs> like every... Okay, that's the end. Like this is the thing, like... There will always be like one problem, like, you know, like... Whatever, however peace we come to... There will always be that one person who like you know oppresses someone and the person that that person oppresses gets like you know hung on revenge and that person starts oppressing others and this continues like this will never end this like as long as people you know people exist this will continue keep on happening and happening like like however peaceful a world is there will always be that that one problem all the time it's, it's kind of impossible to reach true peace. It's impossible. Like, wow. Anyways, um, okay, so this episode, uh, we get acquainted with the two brothers, uh, Marco and Volin, a little information about them. And, you know, like we meet, <coughs> we, we get their backstory, how, like, you know, how uh, Marco said that my, uh, you know parents had had died and how his father had been like you know uh, killed in front of him when he was eight years old <coughs> and <coughs> like this is the thing like this really shows us the contrast like i'm not sure if the story that amon was saying you know how his parents were like you know killed as well is a, a true or not i'm not sure if it is true then this really shows us the contrast between like you know people who don't go for revenge and people who keep like you know like keep going f for revenge like marco is probably the example of someone who like you know who's who's the victim of the same circumstances that um amon went through if his words are true um so we can see how marco is now you know like he's trying to everything to do protect his brother and like you know uh, he's like, you know, looking out for his well-being all that stuff you can see that and while here is Amon who is just like, yeah, I'll get revenge, I'll destroy, like, you know, all the benders, all the benders will, like, you know, die and all that stuff is like going on. And yeah, like this, this really shows. Now, okay, so here's this episode, um, we, we meet a few, now, <laughs> I don't know what's up <laughs> with the names in this in this show the names are very interesting like um shady shin um uh, and what was the name the zolt or whatever i think 
just a sec uh, of a lightning bolt result like, <laughs> i don't know man like i feel like this went in a more western like you know like you know like i i i i i uh, i've mentioned this while i was watching avatar as well i i said this before that uh, avatar the last airbender had so many things with um you know like had had a lot of i think japanese influence like like the whole thing with anime the way they did their comedy and the way uh, you know the names were you know there was a lot of japanese name a lot of them uh, for example momo is a japanese name momo momo means peach uh, and since like you know momo was eating a peach his his name was momo um mm, oh, what else uh, a few others as well i i, I can't like you know, i don't remember them but there were a lot of japanese like you know uh, names that um haru yeah i think um then a lot of like you know like obviously there were western names as well but i feel the japanese uh what do you call that the japanese uh what do you call it uh influence yeah i can say like you know was a lot more in avatar than i'm, I'm getting from like you know uh, the legend of korra I, f I feel like like you know something did change like for example the names the names are so um <laughs> wacky and kind of like you know like <laughs> like lightning bolt zold and then like you know like shady shin and I, I feel like i also heard a few other like you know the, these type of uh names as well uh while mako uh mako okay you know what mako can be a japanese name yeah uh, yeah mako is a japanese name it has like a thing uh bolin uh bolin is a western name i think uh kora 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 is also a western name i think like I, I can kind of like you know uh, say say like this. So this the 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 thing has a, the atmosphere of Korra. Like if I compare it to Avatar, has a little like you know difference, but it is fun in its own way. You know like these names. <laughs> like you know when it listen, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh my god, I love these names. And uh, <laughs> yeah, these are good. But anyways, um, so. <clears throat> Okay, so yeah, I kind of went on a tangent. Anyways, um, so <clears throat> yeah, Shady Shin comes, uh, the whole thing with the money, you know, you need to make money before this amount of time, uh, 30,000 yuans, I think that's like something like that. And obviously, like, you know, Bolin wanted to get that money as quick as possible. So he was like, all right, I'll do your job. And obviously Shady Shin brings him to somewhere not only shady shin but the person who he was working for lightning bolt Zolt, and um bowling all of them got captured my god so they every one of all of them were like fell into the same trap i guess and uh, yeah and obviously marco like you know like marco comes and marco decides to go and look for him cora goes alongside him and we meet the chi vendor uh, no the chi blockers sorry the chi blockers now obviously this is something i guess which came from um uh tai li and uh, like you know the the people who probably like you know practiced tai li's technique they became the chi blockers i'm guessing or maybe uh, you know something like that and uh these people obviously they don't bend they just like you know fight they're like good with martial arts and uh like you know uh, blocking the chi and I'm, I'm guessing that these people are probably perfect for being an equalist, you know, like they don't bend, they have like, you know, the martial art prowess and all that stuff. But yeah. All right. Um, so we go to this place where. Oh, no, before that, we go, we meet the guy who was the equalist, who was uh, you know, talking about, the, you know, like join the equalist. Uh, the benders are oppressing us all that stuff he was spewing you know, in the middle of the road that guy and we get the information and underneath the invitation the map and excuse me we reach the place where everything is happening now here's where everything starts a few things we get to see here first of all we meet amon amon says a few things a few of his backstory which i'm not sure if those are completely true or if he's just making them up to like you know to get, gather power to gain power or something like it can go either way either the, the things that he said are actually true and he really is like you know looking for revenge and uh not revenge but 
to eradicate all the bending from the world maybe he's thinking something like that either that or he's just telling lies in front of people just so that he can gain power and he can you know like you know oppress people it's either of it we're still not sure what it is actually but i will like you know i will go um for now i will believe him you know i will believe that yeah whatever he said was truth and he he really is like a, a victim of bending uh, you know firebender killed <clears throat> the dad uh, uh, the, the, his family and uh, yeah that's why he's doing this now here's the thing he the thing that he says here is like um bending was always the reason for you know wars now <laughs> He is kind of correct in a way and he's also incorrect in another way the way he's correct is obviously if you take this literally he is correct like it was because of bending fire bending that the whole war started in avatar you know if no one had any bending probably that huge amount of like you know like that in that huge way probably the war wouldn't have started but he's also incorrect in another way which is even if the world did not have any bending in some way or the other people would wage wars like as i said uh people like you know like the world would never be at peace however peaceful that world is like it, 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 there will always be that one problem that kind of like you know starts uh, escalating into a bigger problem and in the end it will result in war so even if bending was not there people would have found one way or the other to actually hate others and start the whole war about something you know different completely different so that's why i'm saying he's correct in literal sense but he's incorrect because either way uh, you know like this probably would have happened even if bending was not there so <clears throat> like yeah like what else can i say and like he he's talking about oppressing people and stuff like i don't know if he actually realizes this but what he's doing now is the same thing that you know uh the firebenders did to him he's oppressing people so yeah like what can i say like this is this will always be like you know like this thing like uh some people will act like a prick they'll act like uh like you know self-righteous uh, egotistical bad person and like you know probably harm someone injure someone hurt someone even kill someone that person will like you know like that person's family member will get this whole revenge thing going on they'll be like oh i'll take revenge and they will start walking the path of violence and like you know they they will involve all the other people around them and also like involve a lot of innocent people and this is how war starts and that's what's basically happening now this is this is like a thing like you know like the whole like hatred the whole vengeance thing this is a very interesting thing as i've, I've like you know i've in a lot of other animes i've also talked about this that <clears throat> like vengeance obviously vengeance and revenge is a thing that you should not act upon it only takes from people it only takes from people and it just wastes and your life and after you've done with revenge you are empty you're an empty husk so like you know you should not go and you know indulge in revenge uh, in, in revenge and vengeance but at the same time you know like if you think about it from that person's perspective who was the victim like how can you even like you know like make them understand that like revenge is wrong like obviously they are going to say to you like if you go and talk to them and say that you know what you're doing this this is wrong revenge is wrong you should not do this obviously that person will counter like you know question you they'll say that like this you can say this because you are unaffected by this i went through these type of things that's why i have every right to go and walk the path of revenge what do you answer in that point you know like obviously the thing that he's he or she is saying is obviously true like that person went through something that's why they're going in the path of revenge so actually like you know like it, it does seem like uh like you know like it's obviously revenge is wrong but at the same time like you know like how how do you even make people understand that when the people who you're trying to um, uh, like you know under make it understand is a victim and he or she has gone through a lot of bad stuff like this is this is a thing like you know this is a very complicated thing like <sighs> no one have any answers to this proper answers like what do you even do in this situation but you know like i'm sure everyone will um agree to this that 
revenge is obviously a very bad thing uh, whenever you go through that path it'll only take from you it'll take from other people as well and, <clears throat> and in the end you'll be left with nothing just the remnants of the things that you've destroyed and your life as well the remnant of your life with nothing just like you'll be like an empty husk wandering around trying to find <clears throat> the next thing that you can you know seek vengeance on and that'll make you like an evil person and that's what happens like Aang wanted to stop that and uh, not only Aang like on, a lot of animals like a lot of main characters try to stop that thing the never-ending cycle of hatred and revenge and vengeance but in the end this is what happens like you, you cannot like eradicate this thing from the world it will always be there whatever there is light there will always be the shadow so yeah oh boy anyways um <clears throat> so yeah like here like you know we meet amon all that stuff amon takes away bending now here's the thing as i as like tenzin said later on as well like this is the power that only ang had so how can this guy have that who knows maybe he really has that power or maybe this is some other way like you know he's doing it um you know maybe he's tricking everyone like i don't know like it, it might be something like that uh or maybe he really does have that power we'll have to wait for that you know and understand i'm sure they'll give us the answers but if he really has the power to take away bending my god that's that's really something rare uh, or maybe maybe because he has that power maybe that's why he cannot bend you know because he can take our bending from others who knows we'll have to wait for that i'm sure they're going to answer our questions but yeah that happens and we we're going to use the steam pipe take bolin and all of them away from that we have a little like, you know fighting scene and uh, naga helps us naga was the mvp he just came and just you know <laughs> oh my god uh drove away the uh, the, the uh, enemies and uh, yeah and then tenzin gets to know about everything mark um Cora tells everything to him and obviously he's concerned and, and I'm sure he's probably trying to he'll probably try to look into this more after this so yeah so all right so that was uh, episode number three okay let's get started with the next one uh, episode number four just a sec <clears throat> all right so episode number four of the legend of Korra let's start i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> Must madman. Uh, the voice in the night. I don't know. The narration is. I need to get used to everything. Like you know, like the way they're narrating stuff. And I'll... I liked Roku's narration. You know, in after the last event, the way Roku narrated everything. Because Roku wasn't it? Oh my God! What the yo? Oh, they are here. Or is this a dream? I think this is a dream. Because I... F I think this is a dream. It's kind of hazy, you know, the picture. This is most probably a dream. Yep, it is a dream. There you go. Naga. Wait, Naga sleeps in her room? So big. <laughs> hmm. Who's this guy? 
Hmm, he's right in a way. Tarlock. <clears throat> oh. oh, I was. <laughs> I think so. Forty two years ago, Yakon. Oh, Ang? Yeah. No. Wait. Really? Oh my god. What the what? Oh, this is a radio, okay. Oh boy. Great. <laughs> are you you are the oppressor here? What the hell is this guy? Wow, he's talking about oppressors and he's oppressing everyone. Wow, Korra is really affected by this. I'm guessing taking away bending probably has affected her in a bigger way than I thought it would. Oh, calm down! Mm. God! Oh, what the? Wait, who's this? My God. Wait, really? Oh. Wait, are you a fan or something? What? A son? What? That was abrupt. Okay, I was just talking about like, you know, the names. <laughs> there you go, Japanese name. I was just talking about, you know, the name being Western here, but here we go. <laughs> oh my God, this guy. Yeah, go away. Wow, you are annoying. <laughs> Mad. Huh. This guy's trying too hard. Yeah. Yeah, let me just butter her up, you know? Oh, great. Wow. Mm. Wow, this was his plan. Great. Oh, he's like, wait, my buttering failed? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. I was also surprised. Why did he? She. Oh. Okay, go away. Yeah, go. <laughs> Three pony <point> tail. <laughs> My God, this is fancy. My God. Oh! Oh my god! Nice! Yeah! <laughs> the way he bows! <laughs> Next to what's happening? Why is he so touchy? Like, oh, that thing, yeah. Sato, uh, Asami Sato? Oh! <laughs> He's not believing her. My god. <laughs> Naga. Uh. What? Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> uh. Yeah, Cora's a bit bothered by that. So. What the? Oh my God. Uh Um <laughs> Nah <laughs> uh. All right, there you go. Sato What's the dad? Hiroshi. Hiroshi Sato. Whoa, that was... No, the way you said that. Okay. All right. Wow. Yeah. What, you're hired or something? Oh, he'll, maybe he'll sponsor them. Oh! Maybe he'll sponsor. Phew. There you go. Yep. Um There you go, advertisement. <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. Nice.
No, this is... <laughs> oh my god, is this the... The ponytail guy? What is... Oh my god. Yeah, we don't need those. Korra has Naga, you know? I feel like Tenzin's thinking that maybe she's pushing herself. But Korra's a bit afraid of the whole non, like, you know, taking away bending thing. That's why I think she rejected him. Yeah, there you go. Yep. And for an avatar, everything should be in balance. Hmm. Oh god, not again. <coughs> what? Oh my god! The god! Guys, Bushy! Whoa! Nah, it's, it's actually for your cooperation. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Oh wait. Okay, Amana is here, I'm guessing. <laughs> well, there's Marco. <laughs> yep. Oh, Beifong is here. <laughs> yep. Um. Uh, oh wait, Cora doesn't want this happening. So my God, everything's. It's, I feel like everything's pissing her off here. <laughs> oh my God, where to put her in the position? This guy's so pushy. God. Oh my. It, what is wrong with this guy? Oh my God, this guy is. Wow, this guy is trash. What? <sighs> Someone needs to slap some sense into him. <sighs> wow. Oh boy.
Yeah, and this is how war starts. Oh. Whoa. Oh, trap! Wait, were they like... Were they on top? Shut up. That is annoying. I don't like this, the way this is going. What is wrong with these people? Oh no, this is going... Uh. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well. Yeah. This guy is so... Will he even be here? I don't think so. I don't know. What the? Who? Oh, okay, the clock. I don't think he's going to come, obviously, like, why would he even come? Don't l let your guard down. Oh my god, she's letting her guard down completely. Oh god. Quick! Were they like waiting here? Oh my god! Well, he's here. Yeah, and I came with my whole army. Wait, is this a dream? No.
Hmm. Great. Wait, what? What are those? Wait, Ang? Oh. And Yeah. Remember the whole thing with Guru Pathik, you know? Like as she he said, like admit your fears and let it go and acknowledge it. Alright. Um Wow, this episode. This was an infuriating episode. The whole thing with Tarlock, my god. Never seen a more pushier person like this. Like more manipulative, like what was this about? My god. Like, ah, uh, like he talks big and then he asks Cora for her help. Like what? God. And the way he completely manipulated the whole situation, like, yeah, this guy has been doing stuff like this. I'm guessing like <laughs> this is not new for him. <laughs> My God. Okay. Um. All right, so here in the beginning we meet uh, like obviously we can see Cora is like you know like got a little um, trauma in her that the whole thing with uh, you know like what was that uh, the whole thing with Amon kind of got to her and she she's like you know like dreaming and everything and just like she's not good. And this is probably the first time she's actually feeling genuine fear for her life. Like, you know, like all this time she never had to actually fight for death. But this time it, it really is something like that. And then we get to the next scene where Tenzin and there are like a few other people. I think like there's like a, there was an earthbender and the waterbender as well. I'm guessing this is like the council of. I don't know like different kingdoms different i'm not sure what this was but it's probably like a council meeting that was happening that was tenzin was uh participating in and here we meet Tar. i think tarok was that his name just a second tarlock yeah so here we meet tarlock the three ponytailed guy <laughs> and Okay, that was that. And then there's another thing that's happening. The whole thing with the five fret tournament. Um, we meet Assam. Wait a minute. Let me check her name. Mm, I need to start remembering these names. Uh, okay. Uh, where is that? Okay, Asami. Here we go. Asami Sato. Like I was just, you know, in the previous episode, I was just saying that, oh, like, you know, like I was, I'm not seeing that many, like, you know, Japanese names and everything like, like in Avatar, like we had a lot of Japanese name and it felt like, but here we go. We have like, you know, Mark was also a Japanese name, I think. Um, and Asami Sato. So like she, uh, the daughter of Hiroshi Sato and, uh, he is the manufacturer of the Sato automobiles and the richest i guess one of the richest people in this place and her daughter was uh, his daughter was like a fire ferret fan <laughs> so <laughs> like <laughs> crashed into marco with his with a scooter <laughs> my god and yeah all right so and then we get the whole thing with tarlock he starts annoying us from the beginning you know like he gets into tenzin's place now he was talking big he was like oh don't you worry i'll get everything i'll make a task force this and that and then like you know after everything's happened he comes to tenzin's place and asks cora for her help and my god like 
and there here's the thing i was actually i'm just like how uh, tarlok and tenzin was surprised i was also surprised when uh, uh, kora said that no i won't join which i was actually able to realize almost in the end why she was not joining she was basically not joining because of her fear like not because she like you know like if, if she did not have that fear i'm guessing she would probably jump up at that like you know opportunity and she'll be like oh i'll join you know like i want some action <laughs> and she would probably be like that but that kind of like you know made a trauma within her like a fear within her she's terrified of that mask now and uh amon like obviously like you know like bending is everything for the avatar and if someone takes that bending away yeah that'll be something bad and yeah turlock starts annoying her and like in one side this is happening another side we see marco's thing the whole thing with asami me you know like uh, them going on that dinner and then like you know her actually telling marco that yeah my dad is the um owner of or the founder of sato automobiles all that and Tarlo keeps annoying Cora with like you know gifts and stuff. We meet Hiroshi, I think that was his name. Yeah, Hiroshi Sato. And he says, you know what? I'll help you. You know, I sponsor you. You just have to advertise for us. Like yeah, like no, like you know, like a normal uh, what do you call it? Like equivalent exchange. You know, you advertise for us. You, you know. Um, you you wear clothes having our logo and i'm going to help you out and yeah that that was that and then we talk with like you know we get the whole situation with Cora, Cora talking with tenzin you know and tenzin asking Cora about like if you really are fearful talk about it and i feel like Cora has like you know like this is a thing like i'm sure like you know even ang felt this in one moment that he like you know like are talking about their fear like it's like it not only for Ang or Cora. I feel like this is uh, kind of normal for every person. Like not every person are actually able to talk to other people about what they fear. You know, like it it makes someone feel um, ashamed or embarrassed. You know, like that's that's the whole thing. Like you don't really are able to talk with about your fear, especially if you're the avatar. You know, like like there's this this whole thing of like you know the avatar is the strongest. This whole thing and actually like you know Cora thinking that yeah me being the avatar actually talking about my fear is something very embarrassing and that's what you know like like this is a thing like the, the thing that happens after that is one of the most disgusting things you know like the people like you know these grown-ass adults actually pressuring Cora to be like oh why are you not joining this why are you not helping out why are you doing this why are you doing that Typical reporters, you know, typical uh, like paparazzi or mass media, whatever you call them. And yeah, they like, you know, like these type of questions just so that like, you know, like, I don't know, for their own benefit. And <clears throat> like, like, that's what I'm saying, you know, like, like for, for the world, like this, like, I don't know why, like what people are people really that dumb? Like they don't realize that Cora is just another kid and, you know, like, she also probably has fears like a normal human being. Kor is not a god. So what the hell are you even doing expecting someone who is the age of your child or your grandchild to what are you expecting from that person? Save the world while you like you know sit in your house twiddling your thumbs? Is that what people are expecting? Is is like you know like this 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 whole thing happened in Ang Avatar as well, which was one of the most like you know disgusting things like you know like a grown-ass adults actually expecting ang to save the whole world while they just put the blame on them same thing is happening here as well like people never change this really shows us that like people never change there will always be they that one two people who will just like you know put the blame on you just because you know you, you are at a position where you are capable of doing something like like obviously Cora is in a position Cora is in an avatar where she can probably make a lot of changes but that does not mean that she has to do everything at, at like you know at one time and she that also doesn't mean that she herself couldn't have any fears or any complications or any you know complexes obviously she will have them she's a kid and she she she's supposed to have this 
like oh my god like this thing like this annoyed me av after the last airbender as well and now in Korra, this is the same thing is happening like people just like you know putting pressure like oh why are you not doing this why are you not saving us aren't you supposed to save us like my god <sighs> Anyways, um, so yeah, like that in itself, like, you know, as I was saying, like this whole thing of, yeah, the avatar is the greatest, she or she can do anything, you know, um, so like this, this type of, uh, uh, the way the world looks at Korra is also something that was actually stopping Korra for talking about her own fears to Tenzin. Like she was thinking like, what will the world think if I actually talk about my fears? But that's the first thing that you should not do. Just like Guru Pathik said that, um, like, you know, express your fears. Only then will you be able to accept it. Like, and once you accept your fear, you can go beyond that. If you don't talk about your fear and just keep it within your heart, hidden, you know, like, it, it, the fear will haunt you forever. And it will keep haunting you, keep eating at you. So you need to actually acknowledge that fear and talk about it uh, and, you know, express it to others, your, like, you know, your loved ones and talk about it and then accept it yourself. Only then will you be able to, uh, you know, beat your fear and go beyond it. So, yeah, anyways, okay. So, yeah, that whole scene happens. One of the most disgusting scenes, like the people just waiting with cameras notebooks in their hands and they're like after Korra why are you not why are you not joining the task force is, is it like you know I'm, 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 are you like <laughs> like what did this did that that person say oh yeah like the world is in danger and you're playing with the fire ferrets like my god oh and like that's like obviously those are like you know reporters they they're all they're obviously they're going to be like that because like you know that's what they are they they love like you know bothering people uh, and but what about uh Tar tarlock i think that was his name i just forget his name I, i'm going to like you know refer to him as the ponytail man if i don't remember his name <laughs> ponytail man like you know like what about him like he was just standing there like taking manipulating the whole situation taking advantage of cora all along just like you know pushing a like you know a kid into like this type of a situation like while every while the reporters were asking he was just standing there like that was even more like you know worse than i thought like like i would have at least have a little bit of respect for him if he actually tried to stop the like you know report and he would be like you know what like stop this we don't want any more questions go away he did nothing he was just standing there like uh, the first time he did nothing he was actually manipulating the whole situation to make cora feel uncomfortable and actually join the task force that was because of that. They manipulated, he manipulated the reporters, Cora, everyone in that place and did that for his own disgusting, um, like, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, own uh, uh, ambition. Yeah, ambition. And not only that, that was the first time. The next time, the final time, you know, when um, they weren't able to actually apprehend uh, or, you know, stop Amon, you know, the, the whole thing with the chi blockers happened, they go raid the whole situation. And when they come back, and again, when the reporters come in, the reporters again start asking Cora, like, why haven't you catched Amon? Like, yeah, what's wrong with you? Uh, like, what the hell? And even then, <sighs> Tarlock or the ponytail guy, he, he was just standing there. He didn't even do anything for that situation, just standing there and watching the fun. Like, he, like, like... <laughs> Like what? Are, I feel like the, the, this guy is the most, like, you know, manipulative, disgusting person in this, like you know, at least in this episode. Because you know what he did here? He he's actually he's he's the main leader of the task force. So he's basically trying to gather, like you know, like power. As Tenzin said, that you're doing this because you just want power. He's doing that for his own disgusting ambition. Number one. While doing that, he's not actually standing in front of everyone. He's actually pushing Cora in front of everyone. So what's basically happening? He's the main person. He's going to get every credit. If, if something good happens out of this, he's going to get every, every credit. But if bad, something bad happens from this, he's going to push everything on Cora. Since he's, she's the avatar and everyone's going to question Cora. So he is in a position where nothing will come, like, you know, he, he's in no danger. Like, even if something good happens, he's going to get the credit. If something bad happens, he can just push it to Korra. That's what he's doing here. 
and that's the most manipulative disgusting thing i've ever seen like i i really don't like this guy and yeah this, this guy is just like you know taking advantage of a kid who's a kid of your age and doing stuff like this great what an adult <clears throat> anyways um my god i got a little bit heated there <laughs> anyways um that was that and uh, yeah that was happening the whole thing with uh, asami is also happening asami mako all that stuff and um then uh Cora goes to the uh, uh the place where he was you know she challenged amon and yep amon comes but obviously with a huge army with him acting tough he's like haha i've got you you know like i can take your air uh, your bending away but then everyone will like you know follow you you'll be like a like you know a hero to everyone's eyes so yep i'm not going to do that i have my own plan and i'm going to save you for the last right what else can i say and yeah he goes away um obviously uh cora is very disturbed by all of this now i i don't know like i feel like if cora did not have that whole fear thing going on maybe she could have handled the whole situation she could have probably fought off the people there and maybe even have a little chance at defeating amon as well but since she was so fearful and like, the fear of actually taking her bending away she wasn't able to do anything so she needs to like conquer this fear first and now that tenzin knows hopefully you know he'll be able to help her out so yeah, and the, and she was actually i think seeing some memories or something some kind of visions i, I think that was ang wasn't it with the beard i feel like uh, and like you know like he or even called ang's name so uh, maybe maybe he she'll meet ang you know in her dreams just like ang used to meet roku that won't surprise me you know because ang is technically her uh, predecessor so yeah she she's probably going to meet him sooner or later in her dreams and i'm 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 sure that will help her a lot you know like actually talking to ang and yeah i think ang could probably help her like you know uh, show the correct path and right direction so yeah but anyway so yeah that was it that was this episode wow this episode really uh, made me angry at a few people <laughs> so yeah anyway so that's it so that was my reaction to episode three and four so thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to uh, the legend of Korra episode number three and episode number four if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah that's it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of the legend of Korra. so until then goodbye and have a nice day